Welcome back. Our statement today reads, Suppose you have enough linear dielectric material of dielectric constant epsilon r to half fill a parallel plate capacitor. By what fraction is the capacitance increased when you distribute the material as seen in diagram A, and how about diagram B? For a given potential difference, V, between the plates, find the electric field, the electric displacement, and the polarization in each region, and the free and bound charge on all surfaces for both cases. Alright, so taking a look at the diagram, we see that in case A, we have this sandwich construction where the dielectric sits in the middle of the parallel plate capacitors evenly distributed with an air gap in between the top plate and the bottom plate. For diagram B, we see that we have a weird half-filled sandwich where the dielectric takes up uh, half the space but is touching the metal plates instead of having an air gap. And the right-hand side is simply air. Things to note for this problem, the bound charge and the dielectric constant, the displacement and the polarization. All right, to start, let us first remember that back in chapter two, we found the potential difference of a parallel plate capacitor with a separation distance D as such, where V is equal to Q over A epsilon naught times D, and therefore the capacitance is Q over V and for a parallel plate capacitor with nothing in between it, that leads to A epsilon naught divided by D. This will be important because we can't find the ratio of capacitance with the dielectric material without it. So for configuration A, we know that from the last question, we just found that the electric displacement is equal to sigma, and we know that E is equal to D over epsilon, so plug it in, and we see that in a dielectric material, E is equal to sigma over epsilon, but in air, E is equal to sigma over epsilon naught. In order to find capacitance, we need both the charge Q and the potential of the configuration. So our potential for this particular setup is sigma over epsilon or epsilon naught times some fraction of the separation distance D. Since we have the dielectric taking up half the space, that's D over 2, and we have two air gaps, so that's D over 4 apiece. And then, as you see, the algebra simplifies down until we have uh, a fraction of D sigma over 2 that factor out. Multiplying 1 over epsilon by 1, which can be written as epsilon naught over epsilon naught, will allow us to factor out a 1 over epsilon naught and it simplifies down even more. A couple more quick things for substituting in. We know that Q is equal to the surface charge times the surface area, or sigma A. Solving for sigma gives us Q over A. We also know that the relationship for the dielectric constant is epsilon over epsilon naught. So taking the reciprocal of that leaves us with one over epsilon R, with which we can substitute in now that we have the proper form. So the capacitance for the configuration A, CA, is equal to Q over this potential that we just found. Substituting in the potential, we see that we immediately get cancellations of Q, and we're left with this relationship here. Uh, to help clean up that denominator, we multiply by uh, epsilon R over epsilon R, and then simplify it through. And then after that, we can take the ratio of the capacitance for A with the capacitance of the parallel plate capacitor without anything in between it. And we see that the A epsilon naught D cancels, leaving us with a ratio of 2 epsilon R over 1 plus epsilon R. Now for configuration B, this is going to be a little more tricky. Since capacitance requires both Q and V, we need to find Q for the system. Based on the diagram, we know that the surface area of the plates are split in half. So we have a surface charge for the air and then a surface charge for the dielectric material. And both of those are multiplied by A over 2, which we can factor out as we see here, where sigma plus sigma free. For the air side, we know that the electric field is equal to sigma over epsilon naught, but it's also equal to the potential difference over D, and then solving for sigma gives us epsilon naught V over D. Now for the dielectric, we need to find the free charge. 
And to do that, let's just remember that the surface charge total is equal to the free plus the bound charges. Algebraically solving for the free charge leaves us with this, and we can substitute in the sigma we just found, which is epsilon naught V over D, minus the definition of the bound charge, which is the polarization dot with the normal direction. Okay, for this direction, we want uh, the bound charge is at the top of the surface of the dielectric, and P is in the dielectric. So we use the definition of P as given on the note page. And we see that we have two negative signs that cancel. And also we know that the field is V over D. So we can factor an epsilon naught V over D out, leaving us with one plus chi E, which is the electric susceptibility. Um, but we also know that we can rewrite that later in terms of epsilon. So the capacitance for configuration B is equal to Q over V, which is one over V times the A over two with the, su the surface charges. So substituting in both of these charges, uh, we see that we have a factor of epsilon naught V over D that can be pulled out. We note that the V's immediately cancel and we're left with one plus, uh, one plus chi E. But we know that we can write this in terms of the dielectric constant. And we know that the term in the innermost bracket is equal to uh, epsilon r or the dielectric constant. So we just substitute that in and we see that our capacitance is such. Um, now for the ratio, we divide the two capacitance CB over C naught. And we see again that A epsilon naught over D cancels out in both, leaving us with a ratio of one plus epsilon r over two. So now we must determine which ratio is bigger. To do this, we take the difference between the configuration B ratio and the configuration A ratio. We see here their capacitance ratios as such, and we simply uh, algebraically simplify down, uh, finding a common denominator, and then um, foiling out. Uh, then after that, we factor down to see that we have this fraction, uh, 1 minus epsilon r squared divided by 2 times 1 plus epsilon r. Um, but we also note that both the numerator term and the denominator term are both positive because you square any number, you get a positive. And since you're adding numbers that are greater than zero uh, in the denominator, you get a positive. So since both the numerator and the denominator are positive, uh, we can say that the entire fraction is greater than zero. And that allows us to set up this inequality, thus showcasing how the capacitance for B is greater than the capacitance for A. So now we can find the electric field, the electric displacement, and the polarization um, in, all the, in all of these configurations. Uh, so re recall that for the boundary condition on E, we need to have a continuity there. So E is equal to sigma over epsilon, which we kind of discussed earlier. Um, and in this case, we can just write that in terms of the capacitance, which we found for the two configurations. Here you see a whole bunch of algebra that's thus canceling out terms, things of that nature. Um, you can write in the air cases that dielectric constant goes to one and all of it, but I think we want to highlight how the capacitance can be played into these equations. Um, so I'll let you look at those, but on the next page we'll see that we have a summary of them all, which is a little better. Okay, so here we have a table that summarizes the E, D, and P. Uh, note that in the air, P is zero for both cases. Um, but what's interesting is that for the configuration A, the electric displacement is the same, but in configuration B, the electric field is the same. Pretty odd, but pretty cool at the same time. And then you see in the lower table, the surface bound charge and the surface free charge.